good morning and good afternoon, regardless of where you are joining this uh, conference from today. I want to give you a personal welcome and thanks for attending this talk. My name is Jesse Martin and I am a developer advocate for Graph CMS. Graph CMS is a headless CMS based 100% on GraphQL. And today I'm going to be giving you a bit of a walkthrough, uh, the combination between the Hazura GraphQL ecosystem and Graph CMS together. There's been a lot of different kinds of talks or different kinds of uh, technologies in the past combining different schemas together, whether you were sourcing from some sort of a REST interface or maybe you were sourcing from, let's say, uh, SOAP, if that happened to be your thing back in the day, and even all the way up to just merging two different GraphQL schemas. We had stitching and then we now have federation. And there's been a lot of different uh, approaches to this problem. And I think that Hazura has actually cracked the nut on this in a really uh, elegant way. And I'm really excited to show you uh, how that works today. If you know anything about me or my previous talks that I've done, I usually have lots of slides and lots of illustrations to show. Well, today I have one additional slide with one illustration to show. That's all we're gonna go with today. And I wanna give you a little bit of a walk through what we're gonna be stitching together. So we have essentially three different systems and one front end that we're working with. On the front end, I'm just doing a simple Next.js application. If you're not familiar with Next.js, it's a pretty elegant tool that lets you do kind of best of breed uh, hybrid app server side rendering along with uh, static rendering. So you can do uh, you know, SSG, uh, you can do SSR and all of the other buzzwords that are popular today in the, in the modern Jamstack ecosystem. So that's, that's the front end. It doesn't really matter. You could use any system that makes a web request, but that's what I'm using today. And then we're going to be using Graph CMS, which is the CMS that I work for. And we're going to be looking at the content repo. And what that's going to be holding for us is going to be holding our, our essentially our PIM data, so product information management. And the, the app, which you could probably see here, and if you, if you can appreciate the dad humor here for Hazura Fit, this is my uh, fitness application that I've created that just tracks some simple workouts, some simple programming, and then... Um, I've stored all of that sort of detail. So what's the workout? Uh, how does it go together? And we'll look at that in a moment. I've stored all of that inside of Graph CMS along with the assets and then tracking actual users uh, and the amount of sessions that they've done personally. I've done that inside of Hazura and I'm using Auth0 as the Auth library to be able to combine that glue for us. So the flow is going to be pretty, pretty straightforward. I go to my go to my app. I hit sign up. It hits Auth0. Auth0 comes uh, will give me a new user account. It's going to fire off to Hazura. It inserts a new user inside of Hazura for me, and then that user I'm going to then connect. Uh, I'm going to then connect to my front end so that when I've registered for my front end, I can actually create new workouts from my Graph CMS data, but attaching it to my user ID as a session. I hope that's clear. I'm, I'm going to have to show this mostly in code format today because there's not really any other better way to, to demo this. I will have all of this resource available for you. Uh, the links that will be connected later on, you'll be able to download the, uh, the exact Hazora instance I'm working with. You'll be able to get a copy of the, the content from Graph CMS. You'll be able to have a really in-depth uh, walkthrough. So all this data will be available if I tend to move too fast on this. So straight to code now. Here's my little interface. Let's kind of demo a little bit how this kind of works. I've already created an account. So in my case, I'm just gonna log in. It's gonna ask me for my helpful data here. I log in, it takes me back to the application. And now you'll see that I've actually uh, have some auth uh, environment now where previously I wasn't able to, to advance into the actual workout itself but now I can go ahead and navigate inside of any one of these. I'll go inside of this kettlebell complex. If you go to my Twitter profile, you know how I feel about kettlebells. And we have a very simple workout session here. I could hit done. This would create a new workout uh, system for me. So very simple application, nothing very fancy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and see how does that actually work in code. And yes, I did cheat. This is not a native application. This is simply 
uh, using Chrome's emulating a, uh, uh, a mobile device. But it looks nice. Okay, so here is the code. There's actually two separate projects at play. I have, let me go back to the slide real quick. So I forgot to mention one detail that I think is important here. So on top of uh, this whole connection here, from Hazura, when I, when I create a new entry, so when I make a new entry, so I said I've done my workout, I hit done, what it's gonna do in Hazura, it's gonna trigger a mutation back inside of graph CMS that's gonna be um, incrementing a popularity field there. And that popularity field allows me to then to sort that data. So I may have an unauthed reading of the graph CMS data in a different system. It allows me to still sort by popularity, sort of like a pre-aggregated field inside of graph CMS, still separate from the Hazora ecosystem. So I can be using Hazora to also enrich the data uh, in, inside of graph CMS. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we are inside of a very simple Next.js application. We're going to go ahead and look at what we have inside of this uh, project here. So inside of my, my API, I have the very basic things you need for an, an auth Next.js experiment or, or project using, so a callback function that's going to be saving the, the state locally. This is not relevant to the Hazora talk, um, but this is that's how that generally works. Uh, a login system. And then I have a, a logging uh, API route that allows me to, to send an authenticated mutation to Hazura to write my user data. Inside of my, inside of my index here, let's take a look at what this kind of this home page looks like. The home page is basically going to be what we see uh, when we go to the to the home environment where we have simply the, the workouts listed. So at the bottom here is where we're actually fetching the data. And this is uh, from the Next.js side again. So getting server-side props, I fire off to Hazura. And I'm sending in my special role here for a public field. And I'm just running a simple GraphQL uh, query. And in this case, all of this data is actually coming from Graph CMS, but through the Hazura ecosystem. And I'm able to have a single API now that is sort of a, a built-in automated federated approach uh, where I don't, have to, I don't have to annotate any schemas. I can simply connect these two together and they allow me to fetch this data across systems. So I, I run this query and it gives me all of the information I need. I have a simple variable here called auth that just says, okay, if my auth zero uh, checks in, then I can, I'll uh, show some additional data if not, you know, maybe I have premium content that I don't want to show to the clients. So pretty, pretty simple system here. Uh, we're going to switch to the, back to the browser now and actually look at the interfaces here for these apps and show how this all connects together. Okay, so I'm back over to my slide deck and I'm just going to exit out of full screen mode. And let's start off inside of Graph CMS. And what we have here, let me show you the schema here, the rough design that I'm working with. Essentially, we have at the top level, we have a workout. And that workout is connected to a number of movements. So I have a warm-up field that is connected to, it's a union type between uh, AMRAP movements. That's as many reps as possible for those that are not fitness junkies. Then we have the program, which connects to a circuit. So potentially like do 10 jumping jacks followed by... 20 push-ups uh, or things of that nature. Cool down again is a union type. This popularity field, it gets, uh, gets uh, incremented from the Hazura hook. And so this is the, the basic top level thing. Then there's just a couple of fields here that actually connect the data. So we have uh, base workouts, we have some intensity innumerables. This is, this is not so important to, to track. This is just showing a schema that sometimes you need an editorial touch behind it, right? So if I go inside of the actual workout and I come in inside of this first one, uh, I have this 40-20 hit workout for rowing. Uh, the description that I gave it is called pain manifested. Uh, if, you, if you're into rowing, you know exactly what I mean. This is, uh, this is editorial content. This is where you want to define kind of a boutique feel to your schema. You want to really 
model something sort of specific that your content editors can come in, have a nice interface to be able to work with, be able to connect it to which workout they want to do, uh, attach a new program. Uh, you know, I can make a new circuit here and add an additional circuit to the workout. This is, this is editorial experience. This is what a CMS does. But outside of the CMS world, there's a lot of data that I don't want to have my editors touching. I don't want them to be necessarily modifying uh, user sessions. <laughs> That's like pretty static data. It's not something that should be uh, really viewed by anybody but an especially authorized and authenticated user. So inside of Hazura, what we have here is a special system. We have our users. And I have my simple uh, single user model here. And then I have my sessions and the sessions are tracked on the actual, um, they're tracked to the user, it's, it's a relationship, uh, so that I'm able to say, okay, I have a user that's coming from Mod zero and that user is able to have multiple sessions. And now here's where the real magic comes from this joining of the, of the remote schema. So this is something you've, you've seen before is remote schema. So I attach in graph CMS, uh, in this case, I'm passing in a simple authorization header to the Graph CMS system. But what's new, and this is what I'm super excited to, to show you, is remote, remote joins inside of Azura. It's exactly as cool as it sounds. If I go back over to the data and underneath my sessions here, I can actually have on a relationship, remote relationships. How cool is that? So I'm going to go to remote relationships and I will uh, go ahead and edit this. I should go ahead and actually just close this out and we'll, uh, we'll look at this. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, let's just remove this one real quick and add it again here from, from scratch. So what I do here is I say add a remote relationship, pretty, pretty uh, familiar. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this just a workout. This is the field that's going to be, uh, this is the field that's listed on my system. Um, or, uh, is the field is listed on my, my sessions, so I kind of like a column name here. And then I choose the remote schema I want to join it to. So graph CMS, and here I can go ahead and sort down and say I want to I want to attach it on a workout uh, where, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say I'm gonna give it a slug because I gave my workouts a unique field for slug inside of graph CMS, and this slug is going to be matching exactly from the column uh, slug that I have on my my session as well. And that's it. No annotating the, the schemas, uh, no trying to uh, clone my graph CMS schema and add annotations for an Apollo Federation system or something of that nature. I have a functional, a functional schema. Let's go ahead and see how it looks here. I'm gonna just use the simple um, uh, admin auth uh, environment here just to, to show how it connects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, list out my, my uh, sessions here. Okay, fine. And I have a user there, okay, fine. And let's just kind of prove that it's working, All right? Good, we have, we have users, uh, multiple users. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and show now underneath these sessions, I have a workout. Now there are a couple of gotchas uh, inside of this system right now. So GraphQL is a strictly typed language that we all know. So let me just zoom this in a little bit. So I think that might be hard for you to see. Uh, so I'm going to zoom this in. Yeah, it's still enough to reason about what you're what you're viewing here. So uh, there's a couple of gotchas uh, inside of the the workout. You still need to pass in things that are denoted as required uh, input types from your remote schema. The, the example of that. So in Graph CMS, we pass in uh, the published or the unpublished stage for you. Well, we don't have that uh, convenience feature here, so I have to provide that manually in this case. This is unique to Graph CMS, but if you're merging in a different GraphQL um, schema, you have to be aware that you may have some uh, some specific uh, input types that are required. So my, my workout field does have these required input types. So I pass in stage, and then I'm gonna pass in the uh, where input, but I actually can just leave it empty. And that's kind of a funny thing. Um, there'll maybe be a workaround for this at some point. The where clause is technically getting inserted at runtime with the slug from my session automatically to this query that's being um, being uh, offloaded to Graph CMS. But I still have to to provide the input type, even though it's empty. So it's a small of gotcha, but not a not a big issue. So I have the workout, and then I'm going to go ahead and just grab 
title. And in this case, uh, for the sake of time here, I'm just going to grab the warm up and I'll grab the, um, well, you know, actually, that's going to be a, <laughs> a hairy long query there. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the popularity on this where I have the workout, the title, the popularity. And there it is. Data from Hazura, data from Graph CMS brought together in a single schema with just a couple of clicks. I mean, if you've been in the GraphQL world for a while, that's exciting. And so I'm super excited to be able to show that off to you today. I think I'm actually just out of time now. Again, I will make all of this available for you to be able to view, to be able to download and, and play around with. You can find me inside of the Graph CMS Slack. I also hang out inside of the Hazura Discord group. Uh, feel free to ping me with questions. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thanks.